Away from the European wheeling and dealing, Turkish football has been quietly building up some serious star power. Several top foreign players have joined clubs there. Maybe the biggest, Robin de Perse from Man U, to Fenerbahce. Also, Lucas Podolski left Arsenal to sign with Galatasaray. And his fellow German, Mario Gomez, will be showing off his talents at Mesitas. So that is a lot of names. I think I passed the test, Owen. Talk more about this. Our very own Owen Fairclough is here. And of course, Saruhan Hatibulu. You usually talk about economics, so we actually decide to give you a little fun to talk about. It's exciting your, stuff. One of your favorite, favorite sports. It's your favorite sport, sure. right? Sure. Football. Okay. So of all the players I mentioned, all are over 30, or over, I should say. And in terms of like moving towards the ends of their careers, there's a lot of football clubs who would say, oh, this is a great investment for them. It's a great for the team. I, I want to get your thoughts on this. Well, uh, a lot of things have happened in Turkish football in the, uh, in, during this summer. First of all, uh, the lifting of the cap for foreign players was the first thing, because there was always a cap for foreign players in Turkey. Now, that's lifted, bringing all pools of players into Turkey. The second thing that we're seeing all these big names now, Phil, is that the sponsorship agreements are taking place. There's a lot of them. Um, Samuel Eto'o, a star in Barcelona is now playing for Antalya Spor, a newly uh, promoted team to the Turkish League. And of course, um, Robin Van Persie, we mentioned that, and you forgot Luis Nani also from Manchester United to Fenerbahce, I have to mention that. <laughs> blame Owen, so, blame Owen. Don't blame so, me, blame uh, Owen. But your pronunciations were excellent, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Tell so, my boss. yes, uh, there is a lot of uh, changes taking place largely because of those sponsorship agreements that are bringing pools of money into Turkish clubs. And now for the real expert. Now, Sarahan, we're seeing uh, Middle Eastern money. Uh, Asian money pouring into clubs across, across Europe. Even the Chinese are now getting in on the act, buying into clubs in France. Is Turkey getting a slice of that, that foreign investment, that foreign money? I think huge. Uh, the sponsorship agreements that I mentioned, one, Fenerbahce signed with Yandex, which is a Russian internet service uh, agent uh, group, uh, bringing 25 to $30 million at the very least. Uh, also, uh, Bean Media Group purchased um, Digiturk, which is the pay television network in Turkey, broadcasting all these names. According to Financial Times, they paid a billion or a billion and a half U.S. dollars for this. Now, there's regulatory issues, obviously. It's not uh, for sure yet. But if that money comes in, Turkish football is going to get more names. And let's remember, Bean Media is owned by Qatar Investment Authority. So a lot more money is coming into Turkey. You mentioned regulation that Turkish clubs are some of the most indebted in Europe, racking up huge amounts of debts. Fenerbahce, I think, has the most debts. Uh, for Turkish clubs. Is that a concern, though? We've seen this happen with football clubs across Europe basically just sort of flaming out after investing massive amounts of money. Isn't Turkey in danger of going down that route? Well, there's a couple of problems. Um, the, if you look at the stock market, June to August, Turkey is an emerging market. I'm going to put my uh, country risk hat on again. Um, but all the things that are happening there with the current account deficit and all that stock market actually is in correction territory, 8.5% down. If you look at Fenerbahce stocks during that period, it was 24% up. So there's something not right. But who's going to get hurt by that? It is going to be the retail investor, individual investor who are actually uh, paying for these. These shares. are the fans who are investing absolutely, in the clubs. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the clubs themselves on the sponsorship agreement that we talked about, there's one Fenerbahce signed for... 10 years selling the rights of its stadium for $90 million. All the money that Fenerbahce spent for these players that we talked about is uh, 40 million, uh, 40 million US dollar. They sold uh, a player uh, for them, Musa So, to a UAE club for uh, 17 million. Yes. So that's 45% of that money was already paid. So this money is going to come more and more, and debt is going to be less and less. So, so, so I want to ask you, I mean, you kind of hinted at this, but the biggest clubs, there are a lot of them are listed public companies. So they're, they're sort of real investments where investors could invest in it. Do you think there would be an additional trend? You've got to spend all this extra money. Where's the money going to come from? Great idea. Let's create a public company. Let's take it public. Let's collect the money, and then we can spend it. Is, is that the trend that is here to stay? Well, that's not only a trend, that's what the, uh, what the Turkish Football Federation is trying to do. They want every club to be listed. Do you agree with this model? Do I agree with it? Well, Because I see problems. As long as there, there's transparency that's established, that's OK, because especially the small clubs need to collect more money to get their operations going. But yes, if transparency is not there, there's so many ways the stock market can be manipulated. And so many people, retail investors, uh, could be hurt. So I agree with you on that. 
if regulations are there, transparency is there, why not? Just going back to the football itself, Sarahan, we've seen this again. If you look at a country like England, uh, huge amount of money, huge amount of foreign players, but we get this familiar complaint that homegrown players, particularly English players, just can't get a break. You mentioned lifting that cap on Turkish clubs. You, have, you, have you any concerns that, that the same thing might happen in Turkey where Turkish players simply don't get a look in on their own game? Well, um, there's a very heated debate going on about this right now in Turkey, and I respect the other opinion, and here is mine. Uh, I am for opening it up. Let people come in. Let RVP come in, Nani come in. They will be playing with Turkish players. Turkish players like Arda Turan, uh, Salih Uchan are playing in, in Barcelona and Roma right now. So this kind of exchange needs to happen, and I think that is going to bring the football level up, especially in Turkey. But we also need to remember what did Turkey accomplish really when the cat was on. Uh, I can remember Galatasaray, so I have to say it, uh, UFA championship in 2000. Three major foreign players played a role in that. And then 2002 World Cup, which was very strange, played semifinals, and 2008 European Championship semifinals. There's no consistency at all. And we always had, uh, Turkey always had the cap on foreign players. So uh, I am for opening it up, bringing everybody Gentlemen, it, it should be gentlemen. noted, Turkey's gone further than England, though, so uh, better performance than England. All right, we'll leave that as the last word. Uh, fantastic having you guys here. It's a real treat for our uh, true football fans.